about the challenge that you guys will be doing next week. So I think this element of the talk last time, Cosimo gave uh, an overview, like a more detail from what is Algorand to uh, what is blockchain and Algorand and, and in general, uh, the different elements that uh, components that are required. Today will be a slightly and um, I think in hands on, if I'm not mistaken, Cosimo, right? It will be much more on the kind of the what is required, you know, when you are coding. And this is going to be essential, especially for next week. So I would say, you know, pay attention. And if you have um, some of the things that he might show, it's like you could, I mean, I was just, I'm just preparing my environment already to be able to run some things if I, you know, if it's required. So just getting much more, try to understand like that. These the basic elements um, you should be able to ask. As I think Al Cosimo, also the, the talk today, like do you want the questions at the end or do you want uh, interactive session? So, so do you prefer questions at the end? Or do you uh, prefer? No, I think that the, the, this time, like it's more interactive, uh, I believe we can uh, end the question along the way. Great. Awesome. So yeah, just uh, guys, just try to open your terminals. And sometimes if you want to test something, do so. And if you have some questions, ask some of the things that I can answer, I will answer without uh, interruption. But then, of course, uh, Cosimo will see the question. So yeah, he will be able to answer. So to you, Cosimo. Then. Yeah. OK, so great. Uh, so today we are going to mix uh, slides and terminal and maybe be the example of snippets of codes in order to understand better. So let me share the screen and start with a brief recap of what uh, we have seen last time. So last time we saw that uh, basically uh, to interact with, uh, with uh, Algorand, uh, there are uh, basic components uh, like uh, a node, uh, an indexer, some uh, SD keys. Uh, I'm going to use Python today, but of course you are free to choose JavaScript, uh, Java, Go, or whatever you like. Uh, I'm just more fluent in Python, so it's easier for me to maybe uh, write some snippet of code. So first of all, uh, the other thing we saw the other uh, the other uh, the other day is that uh, to interact with uh, Algorand, you need uh, a node uh, that is connected and synchronized with uh, the, a network uh, and that could be a mainnet, a beta net, a test net, or even a private network. So if you are using a debug testbed in uh, in Algorand sandbox which is the solution we saw here in the in the middle and is exactly what we are going to do uh right now so uh let's jump on the uh Algorand uh sorry the Algorand uh, GitHub And here you have uh, a piece of, of uh, a component that we call Sandbox. Sandbox is a Docker container, so you will need Docker Compose to install the, the Sandbox. And the Sandbox is uh, really a, a good piece of software that bootstrap a micro algorithm network locally. So there will be, you will have a network uh, in which you are the only one uh, generating transaction or deploying smart contract uh, and it's uh, ready to use. Uh, you can use the sandbox also to connect uh, to mainnet, testnet. Uh, there is also this, uh, this option. There is a, a very simple command line interface, but if you bootstrap once you bootstrap the, the, uh, the sandbox, uh, the sandbox expose local endpoints with the uh, uh, endpoints token to be authenticated. So let's start uh, right away 
by installing uh, a sandbox. So here I have my, my terminal. First thing I do is, uh, of course, cloning the, the, the sandbox. Okay, now uh, I can access the sandbox and here's the list of uh, files in the sandbox that are basically the configuration of the network that you can use uh, to be connected with the, with Algorand. Uh, today we are not going to connect to the mainnet, we are not going to connect to the testnet, but we are going to use a very particular uh, micro network, which is private local one, in a modality that we call dev mode. Dev mode is uh, a, a mode to generate transaction instantly without any latency of the consensus protocol, because we are the only one, so we could reach consensus with ourselves. Uh, and this is very useful uh, because uh, you can now uh, generate transactions instantaneously so that if you have several tests to do, it's very easy to, to run a bunch of tests. So let's start uh, again here by uh, asking for help to the sandbox and we have this command line interface. You have the possibility to go up, so deploy uh, a network, shut down the sandbox, clean and erase all the data that you have generated, uh, and maybe enter in the Docker uh, container or copy files from and to uh, the, uh, the environment. So now the first thing I would like to, to, to do is say sandbox up and I will specify that. Uh, this will take a while because this now uh, this process is now building the the network okay locally. So we can jump again on the presentation and uh, come back. Uh, later. Okay, so what the sandbox is doing right now is exactly resolving these uh, from scratch. I'm not using the genesis uh, of the mainnet, I'm just using a new chain, so I will start from block zero or block one, uh, and I'm installing uh, a starting sandbox. Then we will see how to use the goal command line with the sandbox just to generate the first transaction that of course you can always uh, repeat in, uh, in Python if you like or in JavaScript. So let's start by exploring the concept of algorand transaction. Uh, we can skip this. Okay. So, algorithm transactions are the core elements of the block. As we, as we saw uh, in the other presentation, the blocks is composed and contains information that in algorithm or in the blockchain scenario are usually called transaction. Uh, because originally, the only type of thing that you can do on a blockchain was actually transacting an asset, a token. Uh, but today, this uh, terminology maybe is uh, not very um, precise because, for example, we call transaction also an invocation of an application. We call transaction also the execution of a smart contract, the request of execution. So everything is called transaction, but is actually an interaction with the algorithm network. Uh, all the transaction in algorithm uh, have, uh, are classified in six different types. 
you have the payment transaction, which is the most simple one. We just transfer some algo from, from a public key to another. Uh, key registration is a particular transaction that you use if you want to participate in the consensus protocol. The asset configuration is the uh, genesis transaction of a token in which you can shape a token. And we are going to see that in a, in a moment. Uh, asset freeze uh, allow to create white lists or black lists of uh, users for a token. Uh, asset transfer allow you to actually transfer a token with different dynamics. And application call, uh, yeah, Stella. I Sorry, I let me raise my hand by mistake. Oh, okay, no problem. Um, uh, so, <clears throat> so just I have actually one question just uh, on, on this one. So, are these basically different types in the blockchain, or are they just part of one type that? only the transaction is different yeah it's uh, they are different type of of transaction and we are going to to see in a minute how they are uh, uh differentiated okay great and and then just in the on the same way so if you have like earlier when you showed dot sandbox door app i mean uh, app is that if you don't specify dave what is the default it's like is it going to be like if you if, yeah if you just specify app uh, the default configuration is bootstrapping a, 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 a private micro network locally but not in that mode so you you are in a modality which has a latency of the consensus protocol uh, that generates block each and every uh, 4.5 second so there is actually the consensus protocol working, although you are the unique node. Uh, so there are there is a, some latency. If you specify, for for example, app mainnet, app testnet, you connect with the real mainnet or the real public testnet. In this case, with app dev, uh, I create a micro network network locally, but with no latency of consensus protocol. Good. So, because then it will be slow. The uh, without the Dave, it will be slow. The launching, is that? Yeah, like... it's no, it's not slow launching. It's, it's more that if we are going to issue my, um, uh, transaction, we should wait for a second for the transaction. It's not, it's not that hard, or uh, okay. it's not too much to wait. But it's easy. For example, if you have to execute a bunch of tests, it's uh, it's easier to to have instant effects. Thanks. Great. Okay, so the last type is the an application call. An application call is a way uh, in which you can deploy or interact with a with a smart contract. Uh, the all the transaction in in Algorand, uh, in order to be approved and uh, actually uh, committed into the block, must. Uh, respect some minimum requirements first of all each transaction must be signed correctly so uh, everyone can write a transaction a row transaction saying for example that cosimo sends to arun or uh, yabe 10 algo but as long as this transaction is not signed actually by cosimo it's worthless it's meaningless so each type of transaction must be signed by the entities that can authorize that transaction the entities that can authorize the transaction and we are going to see that uh, after are single signature like in a, a human being or a computer that controls one signature so one signature is good to go Multi-signature, we can have account that say we are five people, we set a threshold of three out of five signature. So if three people sign, we are going to approve the transaction. Or the other way to sign a transaction is through what we call smart signature or smart contract. 
Then another thing that all the transactions must respect is a minimum fee. In Algorand, as we saw, there is a minimum fee, flat fee of 0.001 algo, uh, which uh, acts like an anti-spam and anti-denial of service. Uh, it's not going to it's not going to be collected by miners because we have no miners, like in, in through a work, but these fees in Algorand have a nice property, which can, which is I can pay my fee, or if you want to do, develop application uh, for users uh, and you want to back the fees for on VR for your users, you can do that. In Algorand, you can delegate fees. Uh, maybe this is a concept that you are going, not going to, to use right away as a first example, but you should know that this is possible in Algorand. So you can delegate fee to someone else. Of course, if that someone else approves. And the round validity. So uh, every transaction in Algorand uh, as a property that says this transaction will be valid if submitted to a node from this block up to this block. Uh, if you pass this window of validity, the consensus protocol says now this, this uh, transaction can no longer be submitted and processed because uh, expired. And this round validity is at most thousand blocks, which is uh, uh, roughly uh, an hour and an alpha, an hour and twenty minutes, uh, and can be also uh, uh, specified in future. So maybe I can write a transaction today, sign a transaction today. Maybe the chain, the algorithm chain, is at the block. 20 million, but I, 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 I say that this transaction could be only submitted once the blockchain reached the, the block 30 million or 40 million, so in the future. I can use this feature to postpone the submittability of the transaction in the future, for example, or restrict the window of uh, time uh, in which a node can submit the, the transaction. So maybe you have just, I don't know, five blocks to submit it. I don't know why, maybe it's a requirement, but you can do that on our brand. So if- uh, Cosimo, just if I may ask here. Yeah. So what is the, the selection uh, in compiling to a block? Is it time-based, like first come, first serve, the transaction, or is it, because this 1000, like in other blockchains, I know that it's because it's a random or you can incentivize your transaction to be processed early by increasing like the fee, for example. Is that, is there a, a chance that your transaction will not be processed in, in one and a half hour, just that you're mentioning? No, 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 no. The transaction is processed right away. So, uh, uh, once you submit the transaction, it's processed instantaneously. Uh, that time is not must not be confused with the time of uh, uh, the time that it takes to process the transaction. It's just the the, the, the block height on which you can submit the transaction. Once you submit it, it's, it's processed instantaneously in four seconds. Okay, so yeah, may, maybe we, we, uh, yeah, I'll pick up back again when the question comes later. Just continue. And then... Okay. So each transaction in Algorand uh, can be represented by uh, an object with the properties like JSON. Uh, and we have two kinds of properties. The header of the transaction, which is common regardless of the type of transaction. So for all the type of transaction, you will always have a fee, you will always have this a validity concept and so on and so forth and then you have another kind of, of subset properties where are specific to the type uh, so for example for a payment transaction you have uh, this free property because for a payment transaction you have to specify who is going to receive the payment and how much 
you are going to uh, give to the receiver. So this transaction are property of a payment transaction. You will not find uh, a receiver or an amount for an application call because what, what, when you uh, trigger a smart contract, we are not you are not triggering uh, uh, a smart contract by transferring something. You are just invoking an application. So, if you want to explore, if we want to explore uh, a minimum, very simple example of transaction in Algorand, which is maybe the payment transaction, which is the most straightforward maybe to understand as a first step. So here you have a JSON that specified that this is a transaction with all the properties. Then we will have also a signature uh, appended to this uh, transaction. But the transaction here uh, is a transaction that sends five algo to another account on a mainnet. So what you don't see here five and you see five million instead because the blockchain only understands uh, integers and since the algo is uh, uh, as some decimals up to six decimals so six decimal digits if you want to specify five algo you have to specify five million because these zero here are just the, digit, the decimal digits uh, you can write a note here is encoded in the uh, base 64 uh, there is the public key of a, 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 receiver, a sender and the public key of the receiver so we now start uh, dealing with with this concept of public key so a transaction this transaction say that this is a transaction is a payment type as a sender, as a receiver that wrote something in a node field, is going to be submitted on the mainnet and will transfer five uh, algo paying the minimum fee, which is uh, 0.001 algo. That's why here you have 1,000, because of the digital uh, position, the digit position. OK, so. This so, is a transaction. So what are the other numbers? Like just uh, for the sake of the FV and LV? The, uh, this, this one is the first validity round. So this transaction can be submitted to the network. This is the concept of uh, validity that I was recalling before. So this transaction can be submitted, not processed, the process of the transaction will be instantaneous. But if, if someone wants to submit this transaction to the network, it has to do between block 6 million and 6 million plus a thousand block. So if you, if you try to submit this transaction within this window, it's going to be processed. If you try to submit it then previously or after, is not going to be processed. And for this one, the person who's sending, signing, chooses, is it just a way of protecting fraud? Like, for example, or what is the purpose of that? I was just trying to understand that. The, 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 pur the purpose of saying that a, 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 a transaction has a, a, a validity is because in this way, we allow uh, all the participation nodes that do not store the whole chain uh, on uh, on the ledger. They just remember in in Algorand you can configure a participation node into nodes as an archival node or as a light node. Light node only keeps in memory a buffer of a thousand blocks. Uh, and they then discard them with the logic of first in, last out. And this buffer is a thousand blocks. And this enables also light clients to know all the transaction that happens 
in these thousand blocks. So this window uh, allows even participation nodes that do not recall all the chain to actually participate in, in the consensus protocol. And uh, that's because maybe this is a bit more technical, but uh, this is because we can, by this way, handle what we call the hidden potency of the transaction. So the hidden potency means that if you try to submit the same transaction over and over and over again, uh, since the transaction is unique because as a, it has a, a unique identifier, if the node sees that in the last thousand block, this, that transaction indeed uh, already be submitted is not going to accept it again, because otherwise uh, people that own a, a, a signed transaction could submit the transaction over and over and over again. But the transaction must be take effect only once. And this is why we have this limitation because this allows also like clients to validate if the transaction uh, respect hidden potency or not. Great, thanks, that, that explains it for me. Okay. So who can authorize a transaction? And uh, just to, to uh, recall this, this piece, this part here. So remember here we have a public key, a public key of a sender of a receiver. So now we have to understand this concept. In Algorand, uh, and also in other blockchain, but in Algorand works in this way, uh, Users are represented on chain by two information that are a public key and a secret key. So a key pair, the public key is an address that everybody can see with no problem, while the private key is your own private information that can authorize any action performed by this public key. So how is generated? We Algorand use a, a, a standard uh, elliptic curve signature, which is an algorithm to generate a public and secret key pair that are cryptographically safe, which is called AD25519. It's a, a cryptographical signature standard, which is very secure and, and, and scalable. What, the, the, once you put this random seed in this generator, what you get as outcome are two information represent, represented by strings of 32 bytes each. So 32 bytes for the public key and 32 bytes for the secret key. Since it will be very hard to remember and handle pure 32 bytes with zero one, uh, in normal usage, what the, the other step is transforming these bytes in something that is more human readable without losing the unique mapping between bytes and this new entity. So the new entity that are being generated are what we call the algorithm address, which is a representation of these 32 bytes as uh, 58 characters, so like an, a, an alphanumeric address, while the secret key is remapped in a list of 25 words. So those 25 words in that order are really your secret key. And users that creates uh, those uh, um, uh, those uh, keys must remember or must store th that 25 words in a safe way. If you lose that 25 words, you, you will lose the access to the, uh, to, to your address. Of course, wallet and application makes this user experience easier, but you have to understand this just to be aware of what this represents. 
So let's try to see if the uh, sandbox uh, has been bootstrapped. Yes. Okay. So uh, let me see here. Okay, good. We we bootstrapped the, the sandbox, and it says that the last committed block in the in the, in the chain is zero. The block started from scratch. We have three public keys. Those famous uh, 58 characters are exactly those one here. So this network starts with three accounts. And here you have an example that suggests you how to uh, commit a first transaction on, on chain, but, and then how to query uh, the transaction in the sandbox. But let's restart from the beginning. So in the uh, in, uh, in sandbox, I can type status and see that we are still on block zero because in that mode, the blocks are generated if and only if a transaction is required. We are not generating empty block as will uh, happen in regular consensus. The first thing to uh, understand when we use the sandbox is the usage of the command go, which is the command line interface that I presented the, the other day. And the, co the command line go uh, lets you use the following uh, commands like account, assets, uh, network status, node status, and so on. So another, another thing that we want to do uh, right now is generating uh, a first account. So generating that famous public and private key pair uh, on the algorithm network. So with goal account, help, I can see several things that I can do with an account. We are not going to into the detail of everything, but a very useful command is account new or multi-sig if we want to use a multi-signature, but we are just going to create a new single signature here. So by typing uh, account new, Look, we generated a new public key. And if I list now the account, go account list, I will see that there, there is now a new uh, account which has zero micro -algo, so it's, it is, it is empty. If I want to see the private key of this uh, of this account, I should do export. Then say the address, and this list of words are the twenty five words that, uh, of course, I'm not going to use anymore because I have been revealed here, but. This is the, exactly the private key. So uh, the the, um, uh, the the node, uh, sorry, the the uh, the wallet, of course, that the user uh, have to use in production is not this kind of of things. This is just a toolkit for developers that allow me to use to create disposable uh, accounts. Uh, so, going back to the the presentation, uh, this is exactly what we have done right now: generating a public uh, an algorithm address with a mnemonic phrase. Okay, now we have to understand another concept that is uh, really important in algorithm. Uh, 
because uh, so I, I see in the message that you are getting errors uh, bootstrapping the node. So maybe it's useful to follow the the, the, the presentation uh, and then we, uh, we will pause for a minute after to solve some errors. Otherwise, you lose the the the, the explanation and you, you will lose the information. This is my suggestion. Great, yeah. I think that's if it's not working, definitely just let's uh, follow and yeah, great. Continue. Yeah, because maybe you have some dependencies with respect to Docker Composer or other things, so each one could be a different problem. So we are not going to solve every problem right now because we have no time otherwise. So um, imagine now, like I said, my sandbox is now uh, is um, have been created uh, in a new private network, but Let's suppose that we are using the, the mainnet. The generation of this private key and public key has nothing to do with, with the algorithm network. It's something that runs locally. You can even run uh, and, uh, and uh, execute this key generation off completely offline without internet, because it's just an algorithm that generates bytes. So the question that you may have is, okay, but how Algorand Network knows that a new public key has been generated? And the question and the answer is, it don't, it doesn't. Uh, so the Algorand Network only becomes aware of the existence of a new public key once someone that already has an amount of algo commit the very first transaction sending a minimum uh, balance to a public key a new public key so this is very well resumed in this image this gray picture is the whole algorand network right now maybe in the private instances that we have just exists one account that owns some algo. The address that have been created, just we have done right now in the sandbox, is just a piece of information. Has no, has nothing to do yet with the algorithm network. But once this address that is existing, like PLD, Q, whatever, specify a very first transaction to another public key sending. Uh, um, a minimum amount to the, this public key, in this moment, this public key is associated to a new entity that we call account. So the concept of public key and the concept of account are different. The public key is just a unique identifier of an algorithm account. So a public key as also can exist offline, can exist without internet, can exist without algorithm. An account on algorithm can only exist on algorithm. It only makes sense on the mainnet. So an account is identified by a public key that is unique and it is associated with a single or uh, a, 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 uh, univocally with a, with a private key. So let's let's do that uh, here. Like I said, in in the list of uh, yeah, there is a question. Yeah. So what is the collision rate in case like you know that when you generate uh, that there there could be like you know two public keys can can be identical. Is that like zero zero chance? The, the 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 probability is uh, is uh, uh, less than two to I don't remember what what number which is uh, completely negligible. Like it's uh, it's the same it's the same probability uh, that you have to choose twice the same atom in the whole universe. 
Okay, so it's almost so zero. That that, that means yeah. it won't happen. Most likely, uh, I mean, yeah. not most likely, it won't happen. Yeah, it won't happen. Uh, okay, so like I said, I have generated this new public key here that is associated with 25 words uh, here. And this information is not being, has not been processed on Algorand at all. So it's completely offline. The first action that will turn this public key into an Algorand account is what I'm going to do right now. So sending with Gold Clark. Gold Clark is the, 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 the tool that you use to create a transaction. So Gold Clark send to create a payment transaction from an account that already exists and has some balance like this one. to the newly created account. And we are going to send uh, here uh, an amount, sorry, uh, amount of one algo. One algo is sort of one million micro algos. That is the, the minimum possible units. So. Okay. What we see here is the resume of what just happened. So we sent a million micro algos, which means one algo, from the account, this one, to the newly created one. And this transaction has a unique identifier. Now, if I want to see the balance of uh, of my account, like account, balance, address. I have 1 million algo. So 1 million micro algo, which is one algo. There is a very nice um, web application that I've been uh, uh, developed by the community, which is called the app flow. The app flow is like a chain explorer for local sandbox. So it works like, for example, if you go here on Alba Explorer, you will see uh, all the transaction happening on, on, on Algorand, like from this public key to this other public key, uh, you see everything what, uh, that is happening on the mainnet. If you use the app flow, you can inspect the transaction in your private network. So for debugging purposes. And as we saw, uh, there, there is just one transaction in, in, in this network because we started from scratch. So it's, it's, uh, you can also use, remember these, uh, this command we had here. Oh, let me, let me see if I can find it again. Yes, maybe I have it here in the history, like curl. Yeah, transaction pretty. This is, this is the, the endpoint uh, and the API of the indexer in the localhost. Uh, transactions. Uh, maybe I, I'm using the, the wrong API. Yeah, the API listed here. Transactions. Try it out. 
I'm I'm messing with with the with the uh, transaction. Oh, maybe this this is the problem. Yeah, uh, oh, what's the typo? I, uh, I I forget to the, the dash. Okay, so this is exactly what we find uh, if we use the endpoint uh, of the indexer asking for all the transaction, and we can retrieve all the transaction here. Like this is the transaction ID. Uh, this is this was the receiver. Uh, this was the sender of the transaction. There is if this transaction is a payment transaction and you can see almost uh, another nice thing that we do not show in the in the slide that is the signature uh, because that transaction was unsigned but okay you can you have the possibility to explore the transaction here and have a nicer user experience that is different from the command line interface of course but the information are the same one. So there is a sender, there is a receiver, there is an amount of algo, which is just one algo, uh, and there is uh, a node here. Okay. So let's go back to the to the uh, um, presentation. So now we just accomplished this task. We created a new account on algorithm by sending the very first transaction of an amount of algo to this new public key. Like I said before, uh, the algorithm account can be of various types. Uh, you have single signature, multi-signature, a contract or smart contract. So this entity here in violet, in purple, is the entity account. The entity account has its own local state, any kind of account, either being a single account, a standard account, a multi-signature, a contract account, they all have this local state. And the local state uh, has uh, some information in that, uh, which is the, the balance uh, stored uh, uh, in the, in the uh, of the token, and they can be authorized in, uh, in different ways like applying a single signature or a smart signature. A smart signature for smart contract is the contract logic, is the program that signs and approves transaction if and only if the, 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 the program is executed in the right way. Uh, there is a nice concept on Algorand I'm just going to mention here, but I'm not going into the detail because we have no time, that is called rekeying. It's a feature of Algorand with which you can uh, rotate the secret key so you can switch uh, the authorization uh, method of the account keeping the same public key. For example, let's say that I start using my uh, standard account with a secret key, just one, sing one signature, and I have a public key that everybody knows in the ecosystem because maybe I subscribe to several services, but I want to switch for, uh, from here to a multi-signature account for any reason. But I, I do not want to change my public key because people already know me in the ecosystem with that public key. I can do that in other and with Ricky. This, this is a, another feature, but I will keep that for more advanced usage. Any account uh, on Algorand uh, as some minimum requirements. So the minimum balance to exist on Algorand for any account is 0 0.1 algos. And there are minimum balance that you have to uh, lock. You are not spending that, you are just locking that minimum balance. For example, if you want to uh, receive an asset, if you want to create an asset, if you want to create another smart contract. This minimum balance is an, a, a representation of the fact that you are renting space on the ecosystem to your own purposes, but it's not a pure cost. For example, if you get rid of the asset or if you, get rid, if, if you unsubscribe the smart contract, that minimum balance is free for you. It's not, you are not paying that. It's just 
and a locking allocation that must be present as long as you are using a smart contract, as long as you are using a token and so on. Okay, now, uh, so the, the other part is the Algorand, uh, the Algorand virtual machine, but I'm going to uh, maybe pause here and, uh, and take some question. And then uh, what I would like to do after is uh, showing you what we can, what the things that we have done on, on, on the command line through Python. Very simple example of a transaction submitted into Python via Python before start speaking to the algorithm about the algorithm virtual machine. So do you guys have any, any question? So I have one question. So the sandbox you can connect to the main net, right? Like with so that means is is there any other thing that other than the sandbox that you would use? Um, because it seems like the sandbox is just everything. You you can use it in yes. other development as as well as also to be able to even same transaction. If you had, for example, if I had uh, public like uh, some account already in Algorand, I can send, I can create new uh, public key and then I can send even within the sandbox, right? Within yeah. the sandbox environment. So that means yeah. I can use it as my transaction as with the wallet being in my, I don't know, let's say in cold wallet. Um, so is that the case? That's Yeah, you, 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 you can do that. Uh, although uh, the sandbox has been uh, really optimized uh, for debugging purposes. If you want to run uh, uh, maybe a, a, a node because your service need to provide endpoints, the best option is running a node. So uh, running, uh, installing a, a node and not the sandbox. The, the, the process is very similar. You are just uh, cloning and pointing to different uh, uh, repositories is not the sandbox, is the node. The installation process is automized. The command line interface is equal, it's always goal. You do not have to put the prefix sandbox uh, once you type the command. But the node is good for, for production and real application purposes, while the sandbox is optimized for, for a local work. Uh, you could even uh, connect to the, to the mainnet, but not not for the production environment i mean thanks yeah. any question from anyone here it's good to you know remember next week we will be working you will be developing um con kind of combining many of the kind of things that you have seen here and also in the previous um, talk so you should be able to get a, you know kind of an idea of what's going on so if there is anything that you would like yeah, something you haven't understood it's your chance then i think if there are no questions maybe you can continue yeah okay uh okay let me let me start uh, a new a new project uh, one second. Okay, open. I'm going, Jimmy. Okay, hi everyone. Hi. Uh, hi. I understand the general idea, but are we supposed to grasp every detail? I think, what do you mean by every detail? I mean, uh, like the transaction commanders, um, like every flow, every business flow of the algorithm. So what, what do you think, Cosimo, for, you know, a successful completion of next week's project? What are the level of understanding one should, one should have? Yeah, so uh, the, uh, 
the, the examples that uh, uh, I'm going to describe are uh, really documented also on the developer portal. So if you want to get all the details, uh, there is uh, a, a little effort of uh, reading the, the documentation that should be done because we, we cannot uh, like uh, have everything explained in the, in the, in, in the session. So th the purpose of this session is showing you how to uh, move your first steps, uh, like creating the first account, create the, the first transaction, but then there is a, a, another part of the details that we cannot cover here, but should be uh, studied on the documentation. But I would say the idea, what is like an account and all of that, and you know how accounts are kind of stored, it's much easier if you understand it now. It's like how things are structured so that next when you are, you know, working on them, it gets easier. So if, if you have understood at least, you know, what is an account, you know, where is it stored? What does it mean? You know, when I'm generating a new account, where, you know, what does it mean a new, I think what uh, Cosimo was stressing, you know, that the uh, account that is living in Algorand chain versus, you know, the kind of keys that you're generating and all that, what is a block, you know, what does that mean? These different types of accounts. If you understand them now, it will make your life much easier next week because next week you will be probably dealing a lot more building one thing, like building, connecting. There are a number of things that you, you are asked to connect, a number of APIs you would be accessing. And then being able to understand them would take time. And if you don't understand the, the element, the bigger picture, uh, it will be much harder. You know, why am I connecting to this, I don't know, file system? Why am I connecting to this block? Why am I, you know, like that? So it will be much harder uh, if if you don't have that that basic. So I would say at least having a clearer picture uh, of what are what, the nomenclatures and the kind of terminologies would be super useful. Yeah. Is that, do you think, Kasim? Yeah, it's just, uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's why I'm thinking about postponing uh, and leaving as completely optional the part of smart contract because uh, uh, it will be harder to, to grasp everything. So I think that a good application uh, should combine a web development with a minimal usage of the algorithm as the key in order to let people uh, uh, create token uh, exchange token and and uh, create a, a simple NFTs. Then the other the other part of the smart contract can be uh, lead to a more advanced part of the course. But if you are able to grasp the concept of account, transaction, and token, I think you have all the tools to to uh, build the application. Yeah, great. Okay, so uh, let me uh, share my screen again. So here I have my idea in in uh, in uh, in Python, and all the command line, all the good command that I've just showed you uh, can be. Uh, let me say. Uh, transform in Python, simple Python code with the SDK. So, first of all, uh, to connect the your script, your Python script, or your backend to the Algorand network, we need to create, uh, instantiate a client object. Client object uh, are described here. If you, what I'm going to do right now. It's covering uh, a bit of this uh, example. In if you go in SDKs keys and you go in Python and your first transaction, this is documentation that goes all the that gives you all the detail to submit <coughs> successfully your first transaction on uh, on Algorand. Like for for example, installing the sandbox is what we have done together. Uh, installing the SDK. key. I have already done it. You just install the Python SDK. 
creating account. I have done it from the command line interface, but you can repeat this process exactly uh, use, using the the, uh, the Python script. So the first thing that I want to uh, you to understand is that for whatever uh, interaction that you want to have with the algorithm uh, network, you need to instantiate uh, a, a client, a client, uh, a client address. So a client object. But, uh, This local host here and this token are exactly the token and the local host of the of the sandbox. And what we are doing here is from the algorithm uh, as the key importing algorithm, which is the client. Is the, the client is the object that connects uh, Python to the to the sandbox. Uh, if I uh, print here the algo B, sorry, algo B client dot maybe status, and we run this application. Let's see if we can uh, run this uh, like. Let me, let me grab this uh, here, just one second. So let's do that. So if what what I've done here is just taking the algorithm address of my sandbox, which is in localhost, the algorithm token, which is a standard token, I have created an algorithm uh, client, and I've just printed the information of the of the private chain that is running on my sandbox. Okay. In this way, we are connected with the uh, with the with the sandbox. Now, let's say that, for example, I want to import in Python the account that I have created uh, with the command line interface. So, from the algo B as the key, import account. Account is uh, the module that lets you work with account. So, for example, if I say Cosmo is account dot, uh, let's say if we can, so let's just generate a new uh, a new account for now. So we are not going to import the the previous account. We are just generating uh, a new account. And I want to print uh, Cosimo dot uh, Let's see if we have, we have all the properties already here. So, this is the account that I have generated. You see, there there is a new uh, a new uh, public key and a new private key. This private key has not the form of twenty five words. If I want to uh, transform this into the twenty five word, I have to import mnemonic and. Uh, for example, I can print mnemonic 
dollars from private key i will just uh, paste here the previous private key for example this one These are the 25 words associated to that private key. Okay. So you can you can deal with uh, the private key and public key in their pure form or in the transformed form. Okay. So uh, let, let's try to understand how you can create uh, an uh, an asset, for example, an algorithm standard asset. On the developer portal, you have this section that is get details and algorithm standard assets. Creating an asset in Python. Creating an asset in, in, in Python requires uh, basically the configuration of uh, another transaction type, which is the asset configuration. And I'm not going to, to do that by command line. Uh, I'm going to do that with, uh, with Python. So here you have we can just copy and paste this, this example and comment it in the in the uh, here in the ID. I have to to import this uh, these accounts. For this transaction type. Okay, we can we can cut out these comments here. Okay, so um, here we have all the configuration of the transaction that create an algorithm standard asset. We have a sender of a transaction, which is an algorithm account. Uh, it will be the creator of the asset. You can specify how many units of this token you want to create. You can specify what's the name, what's the unit name of the token. And also you can specify some of the rules uh, over the, the, the assets. Like for example, the freeze address is the address that can put someone in the white list or in the black list. The clawback address is someone is an account that has the possibility to revoke asset from someone else. And these properties are properties that you should only take care of once you are really in, uh, in, uh, in production. So for starting for the starting phase, once you uh, during the, the, the challenge, you can just always leave these uh, uh, these addresses always like the, the creator. So we can create a new account that I call creator.
So here we will use creator. And sorry, we have to say that the second one is the, the public key. I will call Token Ten Academy. Okay. I'm not going to specify a URL. UR, I can maybe put at the site of Ten Academy. I don't know. It's uh, maybe uh, academy.com or whatever. I'm going to create just. 10 units of this token and is not going to be divisible, so as no decimal. Uh, this transaction here, this object is not signed. So this is just uh, a, an unsigned tra transaction. If you want to sign the transaction, I have to use the creator private key, which is the first parameters of account. Okay, we have to import, wait for confirmation. For confirmation is a function that waits until the block has been uh, processed. So let, let's remove the error handling for, for a minute. on the top, see if it works, otherwise we are going to uh, try it again. Oh, that's wrong, it's complete. Let's try to run. I'm going to close an error, maybe, yeah, uh, okay. The except part for the first try is missing, I think. The first yeah. one. Yeah. Uh, I'm I'm trying to understand if we can just wait for confirmation. Let, let's let me try to to uh, uh, skip this try and just submit the transaction as it is because we do not want to have error handling right now. Okay, this this was expected uh, because here I used a, a a sender that has no uh, has no funds, so I have generated here an account that has no funds. If I want to perform transaction on Algorand, I have to pay some, some fee. So what I'm going to, to do right now is uh, importing uh, a, an account that already have some funds from the, from the sandbox, okay? Okay. 
So, good morning to uh, Public King. So, that's uh, let's create the, this uh, new account as a dictionary. Like, we can say Public Key and then Secret Key. I'm going to grab the mnemonic from the sandbox. So for example, let's let's use the the account that uh, this account here that has some funds. But I'm going to export this this account mnemonic. And these are the words that represent the private key. So I'm I'm going to use this mnemonic phrase. Okay. I already know the public key, so I'm just going to, to pass it here, and, but I'm going to transform this mnemonic. Uh, uh, so, uh, mnemonic. I'm going to transform this mnemonic phrase into the the real mnemonic key. I'm oh, sorry, the, the, the real private key. And I'm going to use directly the public key here. So in this in this way we have a creator that is already an account created in the sandbox and has some funds. Of course, here now I have to use public key instead of because we we created that as a dictionary. And this should be signed with the secret key. Let's try it again. Okay. We, we created a, an asset from Python, and if we explore it, uh, explore it on the on the upflow, going to asset, we we can see here that we have a ten academy uh, asset created with all the nice properties like tenacademy.com. I really don't know if the yeah it's. Uh, it's the real you I use the right I guess the right URL so this is the way you can interact from Python to the chain of course the chain is running locally in my in my local uh, environment but this is the, the the way you have to work with with Algorand to start using the SDK to actually create token and exchanging token then you have all the other examples here, like transferring a token and so on and so forth. Uh, just one second, I have to answer the phone. Guys, sorry. Okay, do you have question uh, or or doubts?
this is good so so the day up flow just what what was the um, the url just so that yeah i'm i'm sharing here in the in the uh in the comments this is just a web application that is automatically configured to work uh, with the uh, with the, the local endpoint uh so uh if you want to connect to other uh this, this automatically it always use the local host and the port uh, that the, the sandbox uses right it's the same that we we, we use it here yeah. to to connect to the client and it's just a web app that connects to your local port so basically what it does is that the sandbox actually exposes api right yeah, so it the, has and then the, the sandbox exposed an api on the on the sports yeah. uh, and uh, the web app is uh, connecting on in local host and uh, here what we are doing is using the 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 API exposed to the uh, from from the sandbox node in Python. So the, this asset configuration is just a wrapper to create an API request to these uh, to this endpoint. Great, so, awesome. I think I think this is good for you know exposing and what it means and and also actually the app flow would would provide a certain a good start point also for people to start seeing what does it mean like building a front end um in for their application and how yeah. it connects in this case it's of course connecting to the local host but i i think you know it's i think we have yeah we have some references in that yesterday some of the things that he mentioned but it, this is also good to be able to to see you know basically what they have to do in the sense what they will be building next week is to understand what a node is, connect to a node, and and um, and expose that basically into to based on the front end that it's building. Yeah. So you so the the goal should be having a very minimum application that uh, uh, handles two user story. The one on which an admin from Ten Academy can mint a token, and the only one uh, is the, the the user story of the of a, a user that can require a token. This is the first minimal thing. Then we can add, so we can we can create the token in a more meaningful way, saying that, for example, these tokens are non fungible token with some content attached to it. Uh, and uh, and for those teams that are capable of doing that is just really following some specification on the documentation on how you can attach to a token by uh, using the URL here, a content that this has been uploaded on EPFS so that people can see the content. And uh, and the last thing to complete the, the the application for those ones that are able to do that is now you can use mnemonic phrase and and things like that, which is very unsecure, is just for uh, development purposes. But a real web free application should include the interaction uh, with with a wallet. So the last part of the integration on the front end uh, is using this library, uh, which is called Wallet Connect, uh, to let people generate the keys and signing transactions on the mobile phone so that nobody is exposed to security issues. These are the steps that maybe with an incremental approach a team can can have to to uh, create a very first minimum web free application. Yeah. 
Wonderful. I think this is awesome. So just maybe can you summarize what is the kind of, I mean, you, you're already doing it, but what the goal of next week's, uh, so by the end, what are the kind of things that we are expecting to see just from, from the project? Yeah, so the, the goal of the, of the project work is the following one. Build a very, very simple web application with two user stories. The, the first user story is, as an admin of that academy, I can log in and create token that represent, represent that academy certification of course accomplished. And the other user story is as, an, as a student of Ten Academy, I can uh, log in and provide providing my public key and sub requiring uh, an, uh, a, a token. This action is called opt-in uh, transaction here, is, is described uh, here. Uh, receiving an asset. This is the, 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 the other part of the user story. And the last thing is once the uh, admin of Ten Academy see uh, the request of the token, you can actually transfer the token. So you are going to use create token, receiving a token, transferring an asset, a token. These are the three actions. Today we handle everything by uh, command line. Made so, for example, creating the account, signing the transaction, or submitting the transaction. Was ever, everything was done in the in the in the script in the backend. Uh, if you want to have a user journey that is nicer and complete and a real web application, the last thing to integrate is the Wallet Connect. I'm not going, I have no time to spend details here on how to, to integrate this, but it's a JavaScript library that basically lets you create this, uh, this unsigned object here in Python. And instead of signing it directly with a, with a secret key that is stored in the script, it ships this object to the mobile the mobile can, can uh, then sign the transaction and send it back to the network to be submitted to the network like this. So this signed object is not, come, is not created in the script, it's coming from the front end. You, you just have to submit it to the, to the algorithm network. So this is the, the expectation for the process of the project. Yeah. Yeah, and, and, and more importantly, also there are going to be elements, one are tests that you need to do. There will be bonus. Uh, I think most people probably would achieve that. Again, building the front end is the may take for some, but there will be also the smart contract will be added and then kind of tests running kind of in GitHub Actions, uh, using GitHub Actions for uh, setting up you know, a very, uh, I would say, so far we have been doing tests, but this one will be like, you will also be focusing on, on the test uh, element as well. So, but yeah, this is the, the whole point. At the end, we will just be, you will be expected to have all of these sets uh, secure, securely done uh, and set up basically such that the two user stories that Cosimo mentioned are implemented. Great, I think that's now we're just uh, finished on time. So thank you so much, Cosimo. So uh, would you be able to, on Monday morning, would you be able to uh, explain like for 30 minutes, the kind of the project again, or uh, will you be busy? That, that would be in the morning, anytime between um, 10 to 12. Um, so yeah, let me nice. let me check the, the agenda. I will write it uh, okay. after after the the lunch uh, after lunch this this uh, this day uh, today. Yeah. I will Great. I will write it to you. Great, thanks. And just I will have one minute. Anyone from from the trainees, if you are you know just also a vote of thanks, 
and uh, just anyone, you know, your feeling and as well as also just the gratitude to Osimus at this time. Anyone want to volunteer? I hope it was yeah. clear. <laughs> yeah, uh, Thank you, Cosimo, for the introduction. This is a good way to start our uh, way through our knowledge. And so I would like to thank you. And this is a good introduction. So as this is a new concept for me, this is a great way to start. So I, I really appreciate your time and for this introduction. Thank you very much. Yeah, no, it was a pleasure. I know I realize uh, I completely understand that the, the blockchain scenario is uh, new to everyone, could be a scary and uh, the first uh, experience. But yeah. uh, I'm sure that once you start playing with, with, with the technology, you simply get used to it and you will understand it uh, naturally. <laughs> Hopefully. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. Thank you, guys. Thanks a lot, everyone. Have to run. See okay, you. bye, cheers. Bye.